What's up everyone, welcome back again to your HeroClix headquarters. So it's finally that time again. I know it's been months, uh, but we're finally doing a Meta Monday team build, uh, a Meta Monday video in general. <laughs> um, now, if you guys really quickly wanna know why it's been so long since we've done a Meta Monday video, especially Meta Monday discussion video, um, well, first of all, me and Spencer, you know, we live separate lives and we have different families going on and, uh, you know, holidays kinda took us apart from that for a while and then he actually moved so uh, he used to live five minutes away from me and it was super easy to sit down and do these meta monday discussions now he lives like two hours away from me uh and so we're tr still trying to figure out how we can uh still continue to do that we might do some like zoom call meetings or something uh to still get out some meta monday discussion videos if you guys still want to see those let me know in the comments um but without any further ado today's video is going to be a meta monday team build featuring uh this guy right here the champion designed juggernaut figure from the new house of x set uh this guy is amazing and we're gonna build a fun team with him so without further ado let's check it out all right, so like I said, this team is gonna be centered around the new Juggernaut from House of X. Um, so if you guys haven't seen this guy, of course, this thing looks freaking amazing. Uh, and he is super brutal. Huge props to Tyler Spees for uh, creating this monstrosity. Uh, very well done, honestly. This is the best Juggernaut I think we've ever had. Um, and I just thought that about the 300.1 in the uh, X-Men animated series, but this one I think is even better. So of course we'll take a look at his card to see what he can do if you guys didn't already know. Uh, he's got improved movement for hindering and destroys blocking train. And then he's got this awesome trait, Mystical Helmet, which gives him colossal stamina. And Juggernaut can reduce penetrating damage and has protected all caps outwit. Uh, so his whole entire dial is protected outwit and he can reduce penetrating damage and has colossal stamina, that's insane. Um, so super, super crazy trait there. Then he has a special movement power that says charge. When Juggernaut uses it, you may choose to not half his speed value. If you do, he can use improved movement characters and can only move in a direct path. Uh, if Juggernaut used charge during your last turn, he can't become immobile. So very, very powerful ability there. Um, he can charge his full movement if he goes in a straight line and uh, he gets ignores characters on top of his other great improved movement abilities. Then his special defense power gives him stop with impervious, but it succeeds on a four to six. And don't forget that that's going to be able to reduce penetrating as well. Um, and then he gets on his damage power Battle Fury and opposing characters within four squares can't use stop, uh, which is hilarious because nothing stops the Juggernaut. <laughs> uh, and they can't use leadership or perplex. And if they uh, already use perplex, then the modifier temporarily does not apply. Um, so that's insane. I mean, we've already seen how powerful doing something uh, like stopping people from using leadership can be with um, the Spider-Man 1776. And he's not, you know, decreasing the action total by one, but that's still a, a very powerful ability if it gets within four squares of a character. And shutting down Perplex within four squares is also super, super powerful. And, and of course, the ability to get through stop clicks is super powerful as well. A lot of people really rely on those stop clicks. A lot of characters rely on that. Uh, so to just blow straight through them, you know, it can just totally ruin somebody's day. And don't forget, he also has the uh, Brotherhood of Mutants team ability. So whenever he uh, hits with an attack, uh, if your roll was 10 or higher, then you can remove an action token from him. So that's pretty important. Don't forget that he can do that. Um, even though he's got Colossal Stamina, you know, not having to take the unavoidable damage is nice if he doesn't have to. Uh, but take a look at that dial there. He's got 13 movement with that charge special, 12 attack super strength. 19 defense with impervious uh, and don't forget that's all protected outwit and can reduce penetrating damage uh, and then five damage with that battle fury special uh, so that means he's going to be able to get through shape change and stop clicks and he's got that special that shuts off the leadership and perplex within four squares of him super crazy powerful and we are playing him at the full 175 point line for this team build um, so then he's got that full pretty long dial there with that stop click at the end with some steel energy it's pretty nice. Um, yeah, pretty crazy figure overall and very, very well designed. Definitely feels like the Juggernaut. You know, nothing stops this guy. No stop clicks. Um, elevated Train gets in his way a little bit, though. So to remedy that situation, 
and to uh, improve on an already amazingly powerful close combat figure. Of course, we're gonna have to give him the octopus arms. <laughs> so you guys probably already saw this coming, but uh, yeah, we're gonna give him the octopus arms because why not? Uh, if you guys don't know what that is, it's a 10 point object. It's gonna give him flurry, giant reach, and improved movement for elevated and hindering. Um, so the improved movement elevated means that he'll be able to get through anything because he already has uh, improved movement for hindering, blocking, and characters from his uh, charge special. And that giant reach and flurry is going to give him that little bit of extra reach after his 13 movement charge. And he's going to be able to flurry with that 12 attack, 5 damage. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing is equipping him with that right away. And to help us with that, we're going to be playing the new Mother from House of X, also super rare. A lot of people, I've seen people like this figure and some people hate this figure. I think she's pretty great for 35 points, honestly. So we'll take a quick look here at what she does. And if I didn't mention already, this is gonna be an X-Men theme team. Uh, so obviously she's gonna have X-Men keyword like he had. She's a title character, so we'll look at that in a second. She's basically just got uh, standard powers there. She starts with Sidestep, TK, Willpower, and Perplex, and the X-Men Team Ability. Not bad for 35 points uh, right off the bat, but we'll take a look at her specials. So her title effect uh, when she is KO'd is not too bad. Uh, your opponent gets to pick any character, friendly or opposing, and place them in their starting area, and then either heal them a click or deal them one unavoidable damage. Um, you know, I've seen much worse uh, effects than that for title characters. But moving on here, we have her first uh, plus one uh, plot point ability, which says free. Um, this turn, Mother can use her displayed damage powers twice per turn, which is pretty crazy. Um, she starts uh, with the perplex, so we're going to be able to get to uh, use that perplex twice. Um, if she uses that plot point ability. Now don't forget that if a title character uses a plot point ability, they have to attack something that same turn or else they have to take an unavoidable damage at the end of the turn. Um, so do keep that in mind. You will have to be damaging her if you're using her abilities and not attacking anything, which she probably won't attack anything. Um, that's really the main thing that we're going to be using her for. Uh, these other ones, you know, they're kind of neat if you can pull them off, but I don't really plan to use them. Now her minus three might come in handy if we can get to that. It says free, choose a standard friendly character with an X-Men keyword within uh, six squares in line of fire and get them plus one to all of their combat values, which is great. Um, and then also her KO effect gains that uh, friendly standard X-Men characters can use Perplex for the rest of the game, which is also great. It makes this, you know, really not that bad because, I mean, they might do something with it, but then if all the rest of your team gets Perplex, that's pretty awesome. And then the minus five will be pretty hard to get to. She'll probably be KO'd before she can get to that most of the time. Um, but if you do manage to pull it off, it's pretty great, which is just free. Um, you can re-roll every attack roll once, basically. Uh, and just the fact that that doesn't say, like, within range and line of fire or whatever, it's pretty cool, actually. Uh, kind of hard to pull off, like I said. But And then her uh, KO effect also gains uh, from the standard characters can use, uh, with the X-Men keyword, can use prop control for the rest of the game. So again, uh, if you do manage to pull off the minus three and the minus five, uh, which is kind of hard because she starts with zero, um, some great effects there. I just don't really think we'll be getting to it much, but like I said, the main reason she's here is to use that perplex twice uh, and having TK for only 35 points. So she's gonna start off by obviously TKing this to Juggernaut or Juggernaut to the object, either way, whatever works best for you at the time and then equipping it to him turn one, and then probably perplexing up his defense once until he's ready to charge in. Uh, and then you can perplex up his attack twice uh, or his damage twice currently <laughs> until the rules change here pretty soon. Um, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So for the time being, I put her on the team specifically to perplex the damage twice, to get him up to a seven damage with flurry that ignores the stop clicks will be pretty insane. Um, like I said, that will have to change here in a couple months when the rules change. But to complement her, we're also going to be playing Beast uh, to give us an additional Perplex. And his is also going to be a plus two if he targets another friendly character with the X-Men keyword. Um, and he also has some nice improved movement there for elevated hindering of characters. And then you can take a quick look here. He's got some sidestep, pretty decent dial length, only 50 points. Um, but mainly, like I said, we're playing him there for that plus two perplex. Um, and we're going to be using that plus two perplex on Juggernaut's attack. 
uh, to get him up to a 14 before we TK him out there and uh, wreck our opponent's day with a 13 movement charge with giant reach, uh, 14 attack and seven damage. They ignore stop clicks. Uh, it's gonna be great fun. Now we have 30 points left on this team and you know, there's quite a few things you could do with 30 points. Uh, but when it comes to X-Men teams, I think obviously the best choice, especially when the whole team is based around just TKing one guy out there to attack everything, um, we're going to need a Colossal Retaliator. So, of course, Dark Phoenix is going to be our best bet um, for an X-Men Retaliator at 30 points. So, as always, if you guys don't already know what she can do, we'll take a quick look here. Um, she's got a trait where when she KOs an opposing character or an opposing character takes four or more damage from her attack after resolutions, you can heal her one click. Uh, and she may heal past her starting line this game, but can't be healed any other way. So that's incredibly powerful. Anytime she gets a KO or does four or more damage, she gets to heal past her starting line. Um, and of course, we're playing her at 30 points, so she's just gonna be that very last click there with the sidestep, 11 attack, 17 defense, and three damage with the special attack and damage, or special attack and defense powers. Um, and now that special defense power is stop impervious. So if you do manage to KO something with her, um, she's just gonna heal right past her starting line. So you're gonna have to hit her back to the stop impervious. Um, and then she also has a great attack power, which of course is Colossal Retaliation, which says free if no friendly character has been placed this turn, choose uh, an opposing character that attacked Dark Phoenix or damaged a friendly character since your last turn, place Dark Phoenix such that she can make a close attack targeting the chosen character, then do so. Also targeting all other characters, friendly or opposing, uh, within three squares. Hit characters are given an action token and dealt uh, and each dealt to penetrating damage instead of normal damage. So that's actually pretty great because even if you do somehow manage to hit your own juggernaut with uh, the Colossal Retaliation, um, it's only going to be doing two penetrating and giving him an action token and uh, you know odds are that's not really going to affect him too much. That's barely even going to slow him down because if we take a quick look again, see even if he gets hit off of that impervious, he'll most likely still be on invulnerability. Uh, even if he somehow got smacked all the way to his stop click, uh, you know the impervious is going to reduce the two damage because he can reduce the penetrating damage um, and he's got colossal stamina so you don't have to worry too much about uh, you know, getting the action token if she was to hit him. And plus he's got the, uh, you know, team ability up here, the Brotherhood of Mutants team ability that has the potential to remove action tokens too. Um, so I'm not really too worried about if uh, he does get hit. Uh, then we're going to Colossal Retail over here, and uh, even if we do hit him, it shouldn't affect him too much, if at all. So that's pretty much it uh, for this team. That's exactly 300 points. Um, so the basic strategy here is turn one, you know, plus three his defense most likely or something. TK him out here, equip this octopus arms. Um, turn two, plus two, perplex the attack, plus two, take the free action to use her uh, title ability to double perplex his damage up. And then he's going to charge 13 squares out, ignoring all terrain um, with a 14 attack, 7 damage, giant reach flurry uh, that ignores the stop clicks. So, um, oh, and ignores the perplexes if they try to perplex up their defense at all. So it's pretty ridiculous, honestly. Um, and then even if they do manage to hit Juggernaut, they're going to get a Dark Phoenix in the face. So I really like this team. I think it's uh, pretty well rounded at just doing what it does, which is just getting Juggernaut out there and hopefully killing everything. I mean, best case scenario, you either kill two of their important support characters or just totally destroy their main attacker. Like if this was a Juggernaut versus Juggernaut situation, um, it's really just about who can get out there and hit who's Juggernaut first. Um, cause then of course he's just going to run rampant and destroy the rest of the team. All right. But now, uh, I did mention earlier that I know they're changing the, uh, perplex. So you can't perplex damage anymore. So to remedy this situation, instead of playing beast here at 50 points for the plus two perplex, we're actually going to get rid of him and we're going to instead use the new house of X forge, uh, from the fast forces that is at his 50 point line. So as you can see here, he's got the mutant CIA trait, which gives him stealth and improved movement and targeting through hindering terrain, uh, a special movement power that gives him flight, plasticity, and sidestep, 
which is pretty nice. Uh, but mainly we're playing him here for this special damage power that says unique modifier. Other friendly characters that are adjacent or have the X-Men keyword modify damage plus one. Uh, so he doesn't have to be adjacent or within range line of fire or anything so long as they have the X-Men keyword. He's going to give him plus one damage from all the way across the map. Uh, so like I said, we're playing him in there at the 50 point line. He's only got one click of that special power, uh, but you can kind of keep him tucked away safely in the back with uh, stealth and just hope your opponent can't manage to reach him uh, because they're going to be dealing with the juggernaut in their face. Um, so basically that's the modified version of the team for after perplex changes. Um, so you can still use her to plus two perplex his attack up to a 14 and he can just sit in the back in stealth and modify his damage plus one from far <laughs> from all the way across the map. Um, and the cool thing about that though is that he's also going to be modifying Dark Phoenix's damage from all the way across the map. Um, so this actually helps her out a lot with the ability to, you know, hit something for four damage and heal up off of her stop click. And even if she doesn't actually Colossal Retaliate on anything, you can use her to just carry Mother up um, so that she can start probbing things. Do be careful though, if you want to start carrying her up, you can't Colossal Retail in the same turn. So it's kind of got to do one or the other. Uh, because carrying her would be placing her, and if somebody's been placed, you can't Colossal Retail. Um, but don't forget also, she doesn't have Colossal Indifference, so unlike most Colossal Retaliators, she can attack regardless of uh, size. Um, so you can take the free action uh, to place her all the way across the map after Juggernaut's been damaged. Uh, you know, hit something for four, hopefully, because he'll be plus wanting the damage, and then just make a regular attack to hit something else for four, and maybe, maybe also KO something to heal another one uh, would be great. And I feel like after that, um, if Juggernaut hit with his attacks, and then, you know, maybe he took a hit back, and then he hits again, and she hits a couple times, there's probably not going to be anything really left of your opponent's force. Also, I should mention that um, since the Octopus Arms will probably retire soon as well. Um, I think the Waldo arms will be almost as good of a replacement. Um, the only thing is it won't give you the improved movement for the elevated. Um, it'll still give you the giant reach. It won't give you flurry, but depending on what you roll. So, you know, if you roll one or two with the Waldo arms, it gives you plus one attack and defense, uh, which is always nice. It gives him up to a 13 attack, 20 defense. I won't say no to that. Um, and then if you roll a five or six, it gives you a close attack as free, which essentially is just going to be uh, work exactly like flurry in this sense. He's going to be able to charge full movement, hit something, and then make a free close attack. Uh, if you roll a five or six at the beginning of the turn. Now, if you roll a three or four with the Waldo Arms, you get free in cap, which won't be anywhere near as helpful. Um, but the other two, I think, are still worth it. And the Giant Reach definitely helps him out to get that extra square to get into your opponent's starting area from all the way across the map. Uh, so, oh yeah, I guess I should mention um, the Waldo Arms I'm talking about are from the uh, Spider-Man and Venom Absolute Carnage set. If you guys haven't seen it, check that out. Um, really any 10 point equipment could do a lot for Juggernaut after these retire. I mean, we have uh, the Carnage symbiote would be pretty good too. Defensively speaking, it'd give him shape change and it'd give him the ability to heal every time he KOs a figure. Um, also the plasticity of it could be pretty helpful. I don't know if we'll still have the Power Gem after rotation or not. That's kind of up in the air, uh, but Power Gem on him could be great as well. Uh, especially after the rules changes, like I said, because that's going to give close combat expert, range combat expert, and damage plus one. And if you roll a 10 or better, then you do an extra penetrating damage. Um, so that's going to just, you know, with him, that's we're talking about a plus three damage, um, plus three attack. That would actually be better, honestly. Uh, but like I said, we'll have to see how... Uh, if it gets rotated out or not. The only thing that would suck about the, the power gem is that you don't get two attacks, you only get one, but you know, 15 attack, eight damage is pretty freaking awesome. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about all that and uh, if there's a different equipment you would use, um, depending on what rotates out, it might change. Uh, but I think this is a great team nonetheless. I was actually working on another team, thinking about trying him out 
with the prime bishop as well because prime bishop you know makes that shard bystander which says that opposing characters can't target you if they're mm, five or more squares away which is freaking awesome um, and it means you wouldn't have to just you know tk him all the way out there and charge all the way up on everything and hope to get to them first uh, it means you could kind of move up you know, a little bit slowly and more tactically. But yeah, anyway, uh, let me know your guys' thoughts on all that, and that's gonna do it for this team build. All right, that's gonna do it for this team build video. As always, make sure you let me know in the comments what you guys think of this team. If there's any way you'd change it up, let me know. And as always, don't let anything stop you from smashing that like button and clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. And of course, if you'd like to help support the channel even more, there's links in the description for our Patreon. So make sure you guys go check that out. You can see your name here in the credits as well as some other awesome bonuses. Uh, but that's gonna do it for today. Thanks again so much for watching and until next time, this has been HeroClix Headquarters, signing off.